folks, Josephine Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's a family film that came out on June 27, 1986, which is from the creator of The Muppets, you know, the producer of Star Wars, and it stars a popular rock star. Yes, I'm talking about the film Labyrinth. A story about a young teenage girl who winds up uh, giving her wish by sending her baby brother to the evil Goblin King and brought her into a land called Labyrinth, which is basically a huge maze that she needs to solve in order to save her brother from becoming a goblin. And this was a great film. I remember watching this on TV in a VHS recording from Select TV that my dad recorded for us. Yeah, I remember watching this along with uh, Jaws 2 and A Fine Mess. Because this, this came out at the end of the tape. And But this is a, a very good Blu-ray release that I got. It has all the extras uh, from the 2007 release. And they put in a, a new uh, bonus feature of, that's exclusive for Blu-ray. So you get to see those picture-in-picture -picture, um, you know, featurette uh, whenever you play the movie. So that's cool. And I always love this movie because um, it features two of these stars who, uh, of course, one became popular. You know, the other one was just a, an unknown at the time, but she later went on to do a lot of roles in the later years, you know, during the 80s, 90s, and today. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she went on to, to become a very beautiful young actress. Yeah, David Bowie, you know, as um, the rock star who's been, who's been doing a lot of songs you know, since uh, somewhere between the 60s and 70s. He did a lot of rock songs back then. But, um, he was also doing like other films like uh, Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. Yeah, I, I thought he was the, the right choice to play uh, the Goblin King. And in fact, this was definitely one of his brilliant performances, uh, without a doubt. And Jennifer Connelly, I mean, this is the movie I really remembered her from. Because whenever I see her in films like, you know, The Rocketeer and... A Beautiful Mind and all these other films that she's been doing. I always remember her from this movie alone and how she grew up uh, after all these years. Um, she's still a beautiful actress today. But um, but it's also cool to have a combination between uh, you know George Lucas, Jim Henson, and Terry Jones. Yeah, who's a, a Monty Python veteran who who later went on to write a lot of screenplays for movies and comedies. In fact, he even did a book called uh, The Saga of the of Eric the Viking, which was soon became a movie back in 1989, which is sort of loosely based on it, but makes it more, you know, adult-oriented in that sort of way. And, yeah, I, I thought it worked. Um, I mean, it's not the best of the bunch because I know Jim Henson did a previous film in that collaboration called The Dark Crystal and yeah despite of its some of its problems though I think at least The Dark Crystal felt more epic than ever before but this one just seems like um, it tries to be like um, The Dark Crystal only this time it, it had a world of an imagination because it was actually based on the book Sort of in the uh, tradition of uh, Maurice Sendak, the, the creator behind uh, Where the Wild Things Are. Yes, even the book actually showed up in the movie, too. Uh, I, I saw that. But I, I guess that that's exactly what they were going to go for. Yeah, a, movie, a story about you know having to save your, your child from becoming a goblin, but it winds up going into the journey of Labyrinth, so you have to go through a a huge maze you have to try to solve every single riddle in order to to enter and that's the idea I mean with the help of all the characters that follow 
you know, they'll be able to save them before it's too late. Yeah. But let, let's get to the film. It stars David Bowie, Jennifer Connelly, yeah, with Toby Frode, Christopher Malcolm, Shelley Thompson, Natalie Finland, with Brian Henson, you know, the son of Jim Henson, Ron Milk, David Shaughnessy, Percy Edwards, Timothy Bettison, Michael Hordem, you know, Kevin Clash, and David Goats, Denise Breyer, and Robert Beattie. It's written by Terry Jones and is directed by Jim Henson. The movie begins when a 15 year old girl named Sarah Williams, who's played by Jennifer Connelly, wants up rehearsing a play in a local park, yeah, a very beautiful one, which happens to be the story called Labyrinth, where she wants up being distracted by a line that she just couldn't remember while being watched by a barn owl, as well as uh, her uh, old English uh, sheepdog. That she has, only to realize that she's actually late to babysit her infant half brother Toby. So she rushes home on a rainy day. Yeah, she was already being soaking wet, so they had to leave the dog uh, outside. She's already being confronted by her stepmother, who's played by Shelley Thompson, before she and Sarah's father, who's played by Christopher Malkin, to leave for dinner. But then Sarah realized that her brother is in the procession of taking her treasure teddy bear named Lancelot. Feeling completely frustrated, especially with his uh, constant crying, her only wish was to send uh, Toby to the Goblin King. So now uh, the Goblin King has took Toby, you know, while the goblins were already hidden inside the closet and all the way around. So, he refused to return the baby, but gives Sarah 13 hours to solve his uh, labyrinth, you know, the huge land filled of mazes all the way up to the castle, you know, before Toby turns into a goblin. So Sarah wants up meeting a dwarfish um, creature named Hoggle, who's voiced by Brian Henson, who aids her to entering the labyrinth, which I know he... He basically tries to, um, you know, kill all these uh, fairies. You know, the ones that bite, not 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 those ordinary ones, are actually cute. But uh, it was an unnecessary scene where he actually did pee on the pawn. Something that they had to show in a family film. <laughs> Go figure. Anyway, uh, but then a talking worm really sends her the wrong way, so she wants a failing to solve the riddle, you know, just by using her lipstick to to cross all these uh, arrows which um, onto the uh, the block, which then the block started changing. She winds up entering a doorway that's been guarded by two guards. Yeah, that that look exactly like those cards, such as the king and and the uh, the prince. She enters the wrong door. It turns out to be a huge portal filled with hands, yeah, those talking hands, that started grabbing her all the way down, and her direction wants of going all the way down into an oplet where she now reunites with Hoggle after they confront uh, Jared and escape at one of his booby traps. So the two encountered a large beast named Ludo, who's already been trapped by all these uh, creatures. It's voiced by Ron Moog. Hoggle wants a fleeing while Sarah befriends with Ludo. But after solving another riddle, she loses him in the forest. Which Hoggle encounters Jarrett, who gives him a present for Sarah, which happens to be a peach. Which actually his loyalty was to question if he was supposed to lead her out of the maze. But Sarah was assaulted by a group of creatures with detachable bodies, parts, who removes her head. Yeah. <laughs> was, yeah, that scene, of course, um, 
did have some some tactical errors there where you can actually see a um, a black screen effect um, in the background because they actually did use uh, puppeteers to create those scenes so that was interesting but but it did have sort of that effect that seems a little cheesy but that's okay I, I can live with that but then Hoggle rescues her she kisses him and and Jared magically sends them to the bog of eternal stench yeah we're as a punishment which unfortunately yeah the entire stench smell is completely bad until all of a sudden they meet a guard in a bridge of the swamp named Sir Didymus played by David Shinesi or at this rate so, sort of like a cross between Vic Fox and and a little bit of a um, Jack Russell Terrier there. And he also has his trusty old English sheepdog stead named Ambrosius, who's, you know, voiced by uh, Percy Edwards. So after Ludo saves Sarah from falling into the swamp, Denimus joins the group. After the group gets completely hungry, Hoggle winds up giving the Sarah the peach, and when she took a bite out of the peach she wants up into a deep hallucination yeah and that's when um, she wants up dreaming that she was a princess in a masquerade ballroom dance yeah that was probably the most memorable scene in the movie where you get to see uh, Jared uh, you know, wearing that uh, masquerade mask and already you know they were deeply falling in love but unfortunately, time was running out as she, was, as she actually uh, escapes by grabbing the chair and knocking the window all the way until she fell into to a junkyard where she winds up um, meeting an old hag named the Junk Lady who's voiced by Denise Breyer who actually fails to brainwash her, which her memory was jogged completely, yeah, because... This is where she winds up entering her bedroom, filled with a lot of stuff. But then she had to escape already, already to be saved by um, the group. So they wind up inside the Goblin City where Jarrah's castle is, but they're already being confronted by the guard at the gate, which Hoggle comes to the rescue, despite of his feelings of unworthy of forgiveness. So Sarah and others welcome him back as they enter the city together, only to be uh, trapped by his goblin army. So this is where it, you know, they try to find a better way to escape from them, but they had to stop him completely you know, before who knows what's going to happen next. So it's up to Sarah to actually try to, um, to save um, his brother Toby before he'll soon become, as we know it, a goblin. And yeah, I mean that that's what the film was all about. And it's not as good as uh, Jim Henson's previous work, The Dark Crystal, better film in my opinion, but still I love this movie because of its cast. It's an it's interesting story that's um, based on it and I thought it was really cool. I mean, I like the idea of having to use um, you know, a, a journey of a land where you get to go inside a maze where you're trying to find which way to go in order to enter the castle. It's going to take a lot of complications and, and it'll be really hard to figure it out for yourself and t with the help of everybody to, to solve its riddles. That's the idea. And I thought it worked pretty well for, for a story. And I love the, um, the puppeteers that they use. Um, to create all these, uh, you know, all these creatures and all, yeah, you know, like the goblins and everybody, all the characters that we have. I mean, this was definitely the perfect genius for Jim Henson to bring us all these um, creatures back to life, and it worked. It has that feel to it, and and I thought David Bowie did an awesome job, you know, playing the Goblin King. I mean, I mean, he is supposed to be evil as we know it, but. But deep down of it, you pretty much want to fall in love with them. I, I mean, for girls, of course. 
I don't know. I, I mean, because he was a handsome guy, and, and I, I think he's something that you probably wanted to give. Uh, my only problem was, though, was that maybe the story could have been done a little better. But they brought in Terry Jones, um, the, the Monty Python veteran, to write everything to make it more like a comedy. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, because it should work well as a comedy, but I think they really need to uh, try to fix some problems with its flaws that they went into the film. I love the scenes when the, the Goblin Clean was using the, those crystal balls, you know, where he's like swinging them around and around and around like that, and started like, you know, grabbing tons of crystal balls in that other scene, and he started to like fold them around. They actually did use a professional to do all these uh, crystal ball uh, movements and, and effects. Yeah, he definitely had the skill to, to move her all around so that way, you know, you know David Bowie's character can actually start uh, throwing them around in, in the air. And actually turn all these crystal balls into, uh, you know, something magical. Or something, you know, strange. So that was also cool, and it had some great shots too. The cinematography was done by uh, Alex Thompson, so he did created some great cinematography of of all of these wonderful landscapes that they use. Um, every frame from the park to the labyrinth to all the way through the castle, um, it was just amazing. And it, it it was perfect. I mean, it was just exactly what they were going to go for. I love how Jim Henson and his son uh, Brian Henson, along with the rest, were working on all the puppets. It took them a lot of work to do so, to actually create uh, the giant beast, the uh, Ludo, as well as creating uh, Hoggo and, and even the, the fox uh, Didymus, yeah. as well as the old English sheepdog uh, Ambrosius. I mean, yeah, I, I thought, uh, they, yeah, I thought it was cool that they actually used all these creatures, and it works so well, because they they had to use a lot of effects to to put them back to life. So now you have, because um, it was also the first time you get to see Jim Henson and George Lucas working together, because they're both masters in between. I mean, Jim Henson, you know, was indeed a fine legend to create all these Muppets and, and all of that and this was also his last film I mean he passed away in 1990 before uh, Brian Henson took over to do all of his work and they've been doing it ever since so it continues its legacy but all wise I think it's a perfect film it's just it needs to uh, it just needs some work um, I thought Hoggle was pretty weak as a character. Um, don't get me wrong, he was okay, but I don't think he's, you know, that great of, of a character for Sarah. If you ask me, though, I thought I thought the character uh, Sir Didymus was was a much better character for a comic relief, trying to go after the Goblin King and, and his army. <laughs> well, this for his army, so I thought that was cool. Um, I do love the Ludo though. I think Ludo was was the real deal for me because I mean you feel sorry for the beast because you know and he's been trapped all this time and, and I think he was a perfect friend for Sarah in, in my opinion. But it's cool. I mean I guess that's just what they were gonna go for. Um, but I love Jennifer Conley in this role too as Sarah Williams. I thought she was you know. Definitely the right choice to play a teenager. She was actually 13 years old when she played that role. So I think that, that works pretty well because she does look like a 15 year old you know, who soon begins to hit puberty. But she's already, you know, dealing with a lot of distractions, you know, after preparing for her play. And the fact that she had to be involved with, you know, babysitting with her younger brother. So I know that's a lot difficult from her. But in the end, it seems like, yeah, things were turning out for the better. I mean, I love all the scenes, too. I love the music, the score that's done by uh, Trevor Jones. Yeah. 
I, I thought that worked so well. And I love all the songs that David Bowie had sung from the movie. It worked so well because it's hard to believe that David Bowie can definitely pull it off completely. And yeah, he was he was the main reason for me to see this, uh, along with uh, Con Lee and yeah, and the rest of the creations by you know, Jim Henson himself. But nevertheless, it, it was a fun movie. I, I I would recommend it. But if you ask me, though, if you want to see uh, another film that kind of got the idea of of the story, I suggest uh, check out the movie Pants Labyrinth, which is by uh, Guillermo del Toro. Because that's an interesting film to watch where you want to see, you know, the Labyrinth story in action. I mean, it's definitely the perfect fantasy story that you want to see. So, that's in my suggestion. So anyway, I give Labyrinth four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.